The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Good afternoon and welcome to the Veterans Forum. This program is coming to you from the Access Studios here in Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm the producer of the show named Bob Stevens. We have another great show, history that was made and being reported by the man who made it. So for those of you who do not recognize this program, we are working in conjunction with the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project which has been in vogue since the year 2000, wherein they have asked studios such as this, guys like me, I guess, if they can and will use their time and talent to offer any guy and gal who served anywhere in any of the wars, from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, and whatever else comes down the pike. If you have a story to tell or you just like to share your history with us, please get in touch with me. We'll do all we can to make it well worth your while. Now, before we start the program today, though, I must share something with you that I think is pretty important. Throughout the state of New Hampshire, there's a special telephone link, 211. It'll put you in touch with a cadre of different people and groups who can help you solve any problem that you feel you can address to them. You have to ask for it. The only requirement is that you have to have at least six months good service and an honorable discharge. Other than that, it's there waiting for you if you need it or if your friends think they need it. They can use the same situation. We're going to ask Ed to introduce himself, get a little bit of history as he is now, and then we'll get the show on the road, if you will. Okay? Young man, if you will, tell us your name, spell your last name for the record branch of service and dates of service and where you currently live. All right. My name is Edwin Charnley, usually called Ed. Uh, last name C-H-A-R-N-L-E-Y. I live here in Nashua, uh, Nashua Crossings down on West Hollis Street. Been there a few years now. Doing quite well there. Good. Lots of friends. And uh, branch of service and service. I was in the Navy from the Korean War. I joined in uh, October of 1950. I was there until August of 1954. Okay. We thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome aboard. Yes, sir. Now, so we can give you a chance to tell us, if you will, let's go back and find out how you come to be. Like, uh, where and when were you born? What your family life is like? What was life like in school, whatever you did, good or bad, any family relatives in the service, what was your life like, and the little things that make you you today. Well, uh, I graduated from high school in Marlboro, Mass. I was born in Detroit, Michigan. Where and when? Uh, 1932, June of 1932. Okay. I don't know for sure, but I believe that, you know, I understand the history of that time and just getting over the depression and whatever. My father took the family out there to get work. He was a machinist. And he went out there probably to the automotive companies to get a job. Apparently jobs didn't last too long out there because uh, 1933, 34, thereabouts, he brought the family back east. I can recall living in a tent on my grandmother's front lawn in Sudbury, Massachusetts, with snow on the ground. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I vaguely remember it. My brother verified, yeah. He said that was true. Yeah. Now, From okay. there. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. That must have been interesting. Well, I don't remember much about it. Oh, Bob. you uh, lived through it, though. Yeah, I lived through it, but that doesn't mean, you know, I was only, what, okay. three, four? Okay, yeah. you see, you. Excellent memory, right? <laughs> okay. 
No. Uh, uh, well, how were you growing up in, in school, did, uh, junior high and so forth? Uh, any activities? Were you well, a good student or you had to work hard? We moved from that tent to Marlboro, Mass. And we lived there for a little bit. Uh, and then we moved to Waltham, Mass. And that's where I started school. Uh, we lived on Ash Street and in Waltham. And, uh, no, excuse me. Started school, what, a kindergarten or some advanced grade? Well, I, I started in what they called a, a, a primary grade, I guess. Okay, well, like was, one, two, three? That was between uh, preschool and kindergarten. Oh. And, well, kindergarten, first grade. Kindergarten, but, first grade. Yeah, That'd be better. Right. Yeah. And uh, that was a school... Vaguely recall it being called the Freeman School. I'm not sure of that name in, in Waltham. And then we again moved to uh, what they call the island in Waltham. It's island in, surrounded by the, the uh, Charles River. And it's an island. Bridge is going out from... from you uh, go by bridge. bridge in and out and all Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've learned something. Thank yeah, you. yeah. And it was right on the Charles River. And I went to school from there uh, in the Fisk School, which is right across the street from the Waltham Watch Factory. Um, way back, my, both, both parents worked there. Yeah, when they first got married, they were both working there. My father was a machinist, and my mother was a, a, used to paint the dials for the watches. Hmm. Yeah. Steady hand, then. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I, w I went to the, to the fifth school until fourth grade, completed fourth grade, and we moved back to Marlboro, Mass. There's a big lake out there called Fort Meadow Reservoir, man-made lake. And this was a summer cottage that my father bought. Why we even moved out there, I don't know. Chasing a job or just, I don't just know. Got moved? We moved. Okay. You know, Welcome to Marlboro. At this time, my, I have three brothers and a sister, a sister be, being the oldest. And my three brothers by this time were in the service, one in the Army, one in the Coast Guard, and one in the Army Air Force. Was this just after the Pearl Harbor bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The one in the Coast Guard couldn't wait to, to join up with somebody when you know, Pearl Harbor was born. But the other two, you know, they... Let's see, the one in the Air Force, he enlisted. The one in the Army, he was drafted, I believe. And my sister's husband, he was, he was drafted. So they were all gone, so now I'm home alone, as far as kids go. Well, my sister had a baby, and when her husband got drafted, she moved in with us. And we all moved up to Marlboro in this summer cottage, small thing. No plumbing, no electricity, no phone, no water. And we were that way for a year or two. I don't know. It's like Pioneer Days. Yeah, I just about that. Uh, were house, wor was somebody working though to support you even then? Well, I was I'm fifth grade when we moved up there. So I was in the Marlboro schools from fifth grade to high school graduation. Okay. Which was in 1950, June of 1950. So here we are in this house. We had to get water from the well that was about a quarter mile down the road, surface well, break the ice in the winter. Um, How many winters did you have to spend like that? Well, this is interesting. Yeah, but that lasted probably two, three years. Okay. Um, no electricity. Um, well, how'd you heat the place? We had a uh, one of those. Black iron stoves in the kitchen. Okay, a wood burning stove. This was oil, kerosene. Oh, that stinks though. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If you're ever cleaning the burners, you get rid of the. I know. The no that matter when you spin one drop, and the house smells for months. <laughs> yeah. Because I've been down that road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was our heat. The house was divided down the middle by a wall that was what seven feet high. It didn't go up to the ceiling. There was no ceiling in the place except for the you know, the open roof bare roof up there, no insulation. My bed was in a combination living room kitchen. 
a cot. And uh, wake up in the morning, I could see the, the outside through the cracks in the siding. So I knew what the weather was. I hope you had lots of blankets. Oh, yeah. And oh, many yeah. dogs to yeah. sleep with you, too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my mother and father had one bedroom. My sister and her daughter had the other bedroom. And there was a chemical toilet there, a smelly old thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had to be emptied periodically. And, oh, yeah. Anyway, we survived that way. I had to walk to school. There was no school bus. I was the only kid in, How far? in the area. Two miles. Now, you know, I always tell your grandkids, I had to walk two miles to school. Yeah, dragging my canoe behind me. Yeah. <laughs> I really did have to walk two miles. Okay. In the summer, I took a bike. It was all uphill going to school, but all free wheeling coming home. Yeah. Had to walk, a, well, there was a causeway across the lake. And I had to walk that summer, winter. Oh. Now, during the summertime, did you have any kind of a job to help add to the coppers or just, no, no, just enjoyed I was, I just fishing enjoyed and life, swimming? Yeah. Fishing, swimming, boating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We had a small rowboat, a small engine on it. And I knew, you know, after a while, I knew where all the fish were in the lake. You want bass, fish here. You want pickerel, you fish there. And this is how you catch them. White perch down there and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah. You were a real nimrod then. Right? Yeah, yeah. There was tremendous fishing. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoyed that part. It really got me into fishing. Fishing is my hobby. Yeah, I yeah. talked about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Now, how about high school? High school. My family had no money. So there's no, sense, no hope of me ever going to college. Uh, <clears throat> so my objective in, in high school was to get out as soon as I could, you know, Passed the courses, the minimum courses that I needed. Do you have a selection, or did you just have a college-bound or vocational? Well, yeah, they, college, business, I don't know what they think uh -huh. it was. But whatever the easiest was, I took it just to get out of high school. I graduated. I passed all of that stuff, all those courses, and uh, graduated high school. Well, now I have no trade. And the Korean War is on, and I'm draft age. I'm 18. So no one wants to hire me and train me. I'm going to be gone soon, you know, if I don't mm -hmm. join. So I said, well, not, let's go get it over with. So I joined the Navy. It took me two tries. First try, you know, get into the Fargo building, go through the physical, and they said, well, you're, you're too underweight. No? Yeah. Six three, hundred and forty five pounds. Bean bowl. Yeah. So they said, no. Go home for, for a month, eat bananas. Eat bananas, drink come lots back. of water. Yeah. Yeah. Come back. Right? <laughs> so that I did. I go back. Still one hundred and forty five pounds. The doctor says, That's all right. We'll fatten you up in boot camp. Well, when I got discharged four years later, still weighed one hundred and forty five. They didn't Come up and on the word. Not, okay. not, not announced. <laughs> no, okay, let's let's start in then. What was your reaction when you went in from civilian to the first couple of three days, maybe the first week when you were gung ho sailor type? Well, you know, your I, reaction, I, how yeah. you felt, and what you did. I, I wasn't alone because of all the you know the, the whole company was my age, mm -hmm. about my age, and all doing the same thing, getting in the service to get it over with. You know. So that we went, I went through boot camp in Newport, Rhode Island, the Navy base down there. One of the last companies to ever go through boot camp down there. They, they closed it down after, after I went and left it. Uh, I kind of enjoyed it. You know, it was something different, different from my previous life. So I'm here, let's do it. I got on all right. Yeah. Learned a lot of stuff. Forgot well, a, lot of, a lot. Forgot of a lot of stuff. What specifically? Give something to work with. Well, what kind? Do you have any kind of a trade or a skill? When did you start at a particular school? As, well, to lead into where you're going. Yeah. Uh, the girlfriend I had at the time, her father was a retired Navy captain, and he counseled me to. He said. In boot camp, we're going to ask you to take an uh, aptitude test. 
He says, take the test for electronics. I don't know anything about electronics. He says, it's all right. He says, when you take the test, let me know, regardless what your mark is. All right. He had a friend that was the admiral of the 1st Naval District. Oh, oh. So that was going to be my in. You're see? daily in big stripes, buddy. Yeah, so this is going to be my in to electronics. Uh -huh. Well, I took the test, called my girlfriend. She says, oh, Dad says that his friend got transferred. I said, well, all right. Mm -hmm. So I graduated boot camp, and they marked, marched me and a few others down to the dock in Newport. Onto a motor launch. Marched you from where? From boot camp. Oh, oh, boot camp was right at the base? Boot camp was right there in Newport. POE yeah. at the yeah. same time, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the pier that we left from was in civilian country. It was, you know, it, you march through the, the government property down to the dock, and the dock is civilian, and mo motor launches go from there. So... There were ships anchored in Narragansett Bay. They're tied up to, to mics, what they called mics out there. Big buoys? Yeah, the big buoys. Yeah. So they uh, took us out in the motor launch, and you, know, you, you, and you, and you, you, you go on this one. So that's where I was. Went on board the well, ship. What did they use for selection? How did they know? Did well, they had us all picked out before we even got on the oh, motor Oh, before launch. you were signed up, yeah, they had yeah. you all scored. Yeah. All this. Freedom of choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I signed up for. Okay. Whatever I, you want, people. Right? I'm here. One more yeah. body. Yep. Yeah. And so this was now late December. New Year's Day came. I didn't get a chance to go home at all uh, after boot camp. No 10 days, huh? No. No, nothing. Uh, Day after New Year's, the ship, le ship left for the Mediterranean for six months via the North Atlantic in the middle of a hurricane looking for a lost fishing boat. Ever find them? No. I was the lookout, one of the lookouts out on the bridge. And That's I, been kind of choppy, though. Oh. The, the, Give us a story the thing, about that. The, well, the most important thing on lookout duty during their storm is to duck when the waves crashed over the okay, bridge. Okay, bow in. Yep. yep. And we, we went all through the place over there. And never well, saw, our, never saw another storm, ship. You couldn't see anyway. Yeah. Then, no. then 15, 20 foot waves. Oh, oh yeah. It, it, we had uh, two 20 foot whale boats on board hanging from the davits. Well, one of them broke loose somehow or other swung around, broke in half, took out a 20-millimeter uh, gun mount. Wow. Yeah. We lost all our life rafts, lifelines. They weren't secured? Oh, yeah, they were secured, but, they, you know, with the storm, it just, the waves just tore them, up, tore them off. And we finally got to uh, the first port was uh, Iran, Algiers. And then we had to replenish the... All the safety Would you stuff. come down by the Azores or go to uh, through, Europe uh, and across the, down the... Uh, Gibraltar, straight to Gibraltar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did we stop at Gibraltar? We may have, yeah. I'm not sure. I know I stopped there one time. I was aboard for a couple of cruises to the middle. Oh? Yeah. This is the first cruise then? First cruise, okay. yeah. yeah. We'll take each one at a time. Yeah. And uh, every time we hit a port, go ashore. Never going to be here again, so I had to go ashore. Oh, yeah. Not for long, just to, you know, get out and Did walk you say around. You've been there. Yeah, yeah. Say, well, I've been Anything there. happened while you had to sure leave? You get in any trouble or trouble no, the natives no, or the people? No. I was 18, you know, and uh, I made friends with a, another guy who was, well, my, fam my parents moved to Berica after I joined the Navy. They sold the house, sold everything. I don't know what happened to my, all my stuff disappeared. But anyway, they moved to Barrica, living in a small tra 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 yeah, travel trailer in my sister's backyard. You sound like gypsies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my father loved to camp. Oh, yeah. He'd come home on a Friday from work and say, okay, let's go 
load up the tent, and load up the trailer, and with, you know, off we'd go. We you didn't really enjoy it as much as he did, or you just had to yeah. follow along? Well, I'm still a yes. little kid. <laughs> I know. Yeah. My daddy said, I'm having fun. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was about it. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, now I'm from Barica because I got to give my sister's place, my sister's house is my home address. And I met a guy from Tewksbury, Mass, next town. And so we became pretty good friends. And we go to shore together. Well, we took turns. I'm the designated companion. He's the drinker. Oh. And the next time we'd swap. Your turn. Yeah. Yeah. If one of you, you know, if you walk and one of you is sober, shore patrol says, oh, okay, you, you can go. If you're both drunk, well, <laughs> you get locked up. Yeah, you get a free meal, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, anyway. So, Did that happen when you were to Iran? No, no. Okay. No, no. Just checking. Yeah. The this, this ship was, well, they had to do a lot of, re some repair to the ship. The, uh, it was what windy happened? when we got Did there. Did the bow get still with Yeah, the, it was windy there. The plates buckle? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the captain had trouble getting the ship into the dock oh. because of the wind. wind was head on. Oh, yeah. So he just gave it a little more gas than necessary and boom, boom, couldn't boom. stop it. The bow went into this concrete pier. Mm. So, Did they bring him up on charges for destroying government property? Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, wild yeah. mind. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they had to do some welding on the bow. Okay. Yeah, was, now, once you went in the Mediterranean, what, what, what were you there? What was your duty? What were you supposed to be doing? I think it was... It was uh, just a you shakedown know. cruise? No, no, no. It was just... Uh, uh, courtesy calls? Courtesy calls. We okay. were, we went into uh, Palermo. And we were the first ship to go in there since World War II. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Must have got good treatment then, huh? Well, yeah, but there was more than one ship. And we went into uh, Naples, and, uh, Trieste, and Bologna, Italy. Made a stop in uh, some place near Athens. Went to Crete. Couple of places in France. Like a paid vacation. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. So some of these places, yeah. I went ashore. Yeah. Trieste, we were there for two weeks. We were ashore for, uh, out to sea for a couple of weeks before I found out it was more, more than one week. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. They had a beer garden right on the dock for us. Bowling and beer garden, hey. Bocce or like, real uh, bowling? No, real bowling, yeah. It was a U.S. Army place. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah. didn't tell us that. <laughs> yeah, we were tied up there for two weeks, I think. Any friction between you and the Army types? No. 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 I don't recall seeing too many of them. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we bounced around quite a bit out. We, uh, one time, I don't know if it was first cruise or second cruise, we went up to the Black Sea, uh, escorting a carrier, and anchored out in the, in the sea, you know, off of Istanbul, so that the carrier could launch planes on a moment's notice. Mm. We were on uh, the Cold War. Yeah, yeah, it must have been part of the Cold War at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, so uh, yeah. What do they call it? Standby uh, duty? Uh, In reserve. Alternate liberty time, right? You go ashore today, stay aboard the next day, go ashore the next day. But up there, there wasn't much liberty. They even had people manning the gun mounts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Istanbul, you know, that's, that's that was... Uh, well, there was a lot, was a lot of tension at that yeah, time, no yeah, matter what. Yeah. Well, Turkey was, you know, that's all, it was all communist at the time. Yeah. yeah. Maybe today, the way they're going. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, go anyway. ahead. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, being a radar picket can, we went out with a fleet, left port with a fleet, and 
get out there and start steaming and go out about 250 miles from the fleet and stay in picket duty out there with our radars. Pick a can and, you know, we, we had the latest in electronics equipment. Uh, Is that how you got your rate? Did you, were you a striker? Uh, well, I, I spent a lot of duty as a decade. Swabbing decks and painting. You know, yeah. You know, if it moved, salute it. If it didn't move, paint it. Yeah, yeah white. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah, I was one of the guys that had to go over the side, you know, and at the bow, you know, the ship is curved in. Yeah, you get a stretch. So you go straight down, right? I don't know. <laughs> on the, yeah. on the Done platform. Done that, been there. Yeah, on the platform, we're two by six, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Room stick in your yeah. beside. And well, you got that half inch line, it was chow time. <laughs> you got to know how to climb that line if you're going to eat. Amen. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I did a lot of that. Yeah. Then finally, I guess probably three years in, the, the chief in charge of the electronics group came up to me. He says, um, you want to join my group? I said, I don't know anything about electronics. He says, yeah, but you took the test. You must be interested. I said, well, yeah. He says, don't worry about it. We'll send you to school. So I spent a year at electronics school out in Great Lakes Naval Training Center, halfway oh. between Chicago and Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it was really a nine months course, but my mother took six, so I had to get emergency leave and go home for that. And then no sooner did I get back to uh, the base, got a call, she had died, so I had to go back home again. So I lost a good amount of time there and had to make it up. So it took me a year to complete the course. And when I graduated, I at the rank of uh, electronic technician, third class, third class petty officer, ET rating. So I got back to my ship and uh, became one of the crew. Uh, kind of interesting, there was only one other guy in, the, in, the, in the, this electronics gang that would climb the mast. One other guy and myself. We had only two that would climb the mast to work on the antennas. Oh, you mean because of the height? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, arm was 85 feet above the, the water line. Only did it in port. Never at sea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that would take a throw, That would throw you a good I distance know. if you let go. Yeah, no, only in port. So that was kind of interesting to get up there and you know, work on the antennas, radar antennas, radio antennas. Was it antennas difficult to understand? Did you finally, you graduated the course, I guess, but. Yeah. The transition from nothing to smarts. Well, I must have had some smarts yeah. in order to graduate. Yeah. Uh, graduate the okay. course, yeah. And you were yeah. convoying back it, up. It, was that the end of your first tour? Well, I, I had a hard time learning. That, you know, stubborn old me, old me, right? One of the things we had to do was build a small power supply, three and a volt power supply. Vacuum tubes back then, no transistors. And so we had to build this three, three and a volt power supply. After we got it working, then the instructor put problems into it. We had to find the problems. And we had two or three of us working on this thing all at the same time. And we're looking at it and looking at it. I said, oh, I see the problem. Where? Oh, no! right. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> yeah. Where? Dummy me, reached back yeah. in there again. Right. Uh, One way to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Indeed, right now you hadn't forgotten that was a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. That was a few weeks ago. Yeah. But I, when you got back to port, what did you do? You had to go more schooling or just stand by or what? No, I went back aboard ship, the same ship, and uh, became part of the crew. Uh, our captain was very concerned that his oper radars were operating, so we had to do that. And then in the galley, the ships had a, had a radio you know, part of the ship, and they loved that radio. So. If we wanted to eat, we'd go into the galley and say, uh, how's your radio working? <laughs> we could get anything to eat that we wanted. Steak, eggs, whatever. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's yeah. called the barter system. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then um, when they replenished uh, the uh, food on board, right? you know, it, you got this chain passing stuff along. Well, mm -hmm. our parts room was right above a storage that they had. Stuff so they stuff had to come wrong. down through yeah. our our storage facility, down through the hatch to 
the storage down below. So one for us, two for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Captain loved his peanut butter. And he ran out of peanut butter. I don't know why. We still had some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was the way it was. So I enjoyed it. I had a good time in the Navy. I really oh, did. Wait a minute. You got yeah. two more tours. Yeah, yeah. Well, the yeah. second tour, I selected the ports where I wanted to go ashore. The third time, third cruise, I hardly went ashore. I've been there. You know, been there and done okay. that. Yeah. And uh, anything spectacular happened on either of the tours that you no, no, remember? No, no. We. Uh, Did you have to have any, run any of your dummy shots and so forth to track? Well, we we go down to Cuba for a shakedown cruise after being in dry dock. Or Gitmo? Yeah, down to Gitmo, yeah. And uh, they sent me ashore one time with a walkie-talkie to you know, try communications. So we left the ship, and the morning the ship went out to do some maneuvers or whatever. And we went to the highest hill in, in uh, Gitmo, tried to communicate with them. It didn't work. Over the horizon stuff? Well, I don't know. I don't know if it was the radio or just positioning or whatever. But the radio didn't work. So we had the day to ourselves. It was the day on base. We tried golfing. We had a golf course right on the base. That was a fiasco for me. I never golfed before. Well, there's bound to be. Oh. <laughs> The guy says, yeah, come on. I said, I've never played before. Well, that's all right, you know. Yeah, sure. It'll be a first time. Yeah. Man. So I teed the ball up, took a mighty swing, hit that ball. God. Where did that go? I said, up there about 20 feet. <laughs> 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 so the rest, of the, court, the rest of the game didn't go very well. That was the last time I ever played golf. Howard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We tried to go horseback riding. It was stable on that was a fiasco too. I can recall we, we rented, I don't know, three or four horses. You rented? Yeah, rented horses. And we get going and got to the to the gate to this stable affair. The horses would stop. They wouldn't go any further. So turn around and come back. You know, we can't go. The guy running the stable would get on and give it a thing with the spurs and you know, right out. <laughs> we could never get it beyond the gate. Yeah. Went swimming a couple of times down there. Some of the guys went out to uh, scuba diving. And, uh, now, had you any plans to go on beyond the, the, this particular enlistment or, you know, go for 4, 10, 18? Well. What was your thoughts as you're getting near the end of your sign-up? Well, I decided that getting towards the uh, the end of my uh, enlistment period, I said, well, my sister was friendly with the, the professor at this low, you, uh, low textile uh, university, University of Low Textile. And uh, he convinced me through my sister that I should go to college under the GI Bill. Well, if I stayed in for the full year, four years, it would have been October, and the school semester has already started. So I wrote to uh, Edith Norris Rogers, a uh, congresswoman from the Lowell District, and asked for early discharge. Early, okay. And she got it for me. Oh. So I was able to <clears throat> now start school under the GI Bill and take the refresher courses that I needed to, in order to catch up with everything. What was your major? Electronics. Okay. Um, there was a bunch of other Korean vets doing the same thing. Um, we were in the second electronics class in the history of the school. It was being a textile school. It was all chem chemicals, chemistry. That was the main thing. Now they got electronics. Well, our the head of the, the electronics branch of the school hated the chemists as much as they hated us. And he, he let his, his uh, preference be known many times uh, during his lectures. 
But, yeah. Uh, well, did you graduate? Finish the course? I never did graduate. You know, things happen, and life changes, and whatever, and I never did graduate. I wasn't the smartest you know, guy in the world. Okay, then what you have to do then, you got to look for a job. Well, yeah. Were you married at the time or getting married? Well, or? it's another yeah. juggling job. I did get married, <clears> and uh, I got a job with Raytheon Company uh, for a summer job as a technician. Any specialty? Well, in, in, uh, it turned out to be in microwaves, uh, radars and things of that nature. Klystrons and magnetrons and Heat all generators. That, yeah, all that kind of stuff. I liked it, and uh, I did well. I was able to figure out how to mechanically adjust the antennas much simpler than what they were doing for a long time. So I saved quite a bit of labor. So I went back to school, and worked, did that for the summer, and I completed a semester, and I said, my wife is pregnant. Well, it's time to get a real job. So I called one of the people I work for. He says, yeah, come on in. I went in and he says, OK. Uh, he says, you're going to be doing this, this, and this. I said, fine, great. He says, you're hired. And that was it. So I stayed there for 33 years, retired as a senior engineer. I guess I did registered a, engineer? Senior engineer, yeah. I guess I did all right. Yeah. 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 Mm. From where Do I started. Do you hold any patents? Huh? Do you hold any patents? No, no, no. No, I was, uh, I was mainly a test equipment troubleshooter. I love that. Yeah. Find out why yeah. that isn't working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Find out why that thing isn't working. Show me your fingertips. See yeah. How many are there. <laughs> yeah, it was none of that. Now, when you get through school and you got working, did you join anything like the Legion, VFW, no, VBA? I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay. Never had an interest in it. By this time, I'm a, uh, I'm on the wagon and won the wagon forever. Yeah. 1956. We got married in 57. 1956. My wife and I went out on a date visiting another couple. I had a glass of wine playing cards and whatever, and I had a glass of wine. Well, we left. She says, you do that again, I'll never go out with you again. I said, well, what? fine. That was the last alcoholic drink I had, 1956. You married the gal? Yeah, I married her. Oh, yeah. 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 She was stronger-willed than I was. <laughs> yeah. and, you, and she won't take anything other than yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what kind of a family do you have, if any? Just one son. Okay, and how's he doing? Excellent, yeah, very good. Yeah. He's a hell of a lot smarter than I am. Well, yeah. what did he do to get that way? Oh, he, he was my son. Oh, I know the genes <laughs> and all that good stuff, but he had to do something in the way of schooling. No, he was, he was uh, uh, excellent with math. And uh, he grad he, at this time, there was no more wool textile. Or, it changed from wool textile to wool Technological, technological school while I was there, going there. And then it became the University of Lowell. And that's what it is today, University of Lowell. Is he teaching there now? No, no. He went there and got a BS in uh, uh, math. And then we went from there to Pittsburgh State and got a master's in computer science. Mm -hmm. And then he went to... Uh, BU, the Tingsboro campus, and got a master's in business. And he's made good use of every bit of it. Good to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's run, had his own companies. He's uh, worked for others. And, you know, uh, starts consulting for him, and pretty soon he's running the whole place. President, CEO, yeah. That's a common, common theme for him. Yeah. He's done it many times. And he built up an, uh, an old buddy network you wouldn't believe. Yeah. All these people that he's come across, bankers, and mm -hmm. investors. And Some guys are born under that star. Yeah, entrepreneurs and all that sort of stuff. You know, he's done well. Yeah, I'm very proud of him. Yeah. Okay. 
My wife, unfortunately, she died here a few years ago. I miss her terribly. But God has his way. Amen. What are your plans for the future, if you have a future? Well, I think I have a future. Okay, yeah, work on that. I'm, I'm young compared to some people, including you. Right? Watch it, Sonny. <laughs> yeah. no, I still got ways to go yet. Okay. I love where I'm li living. I mean, you have any, well, what do you do for hobbies? Or act, well, I, I love to fish. Yeah. Um, I've been sort of handicapped for a while. Because I have to fish where I can get with my car. Well, wherever you can get with a car, so kind of other people, other people, yeah. places always fished out, and I can't walk very far. That my legs are the problem. Um, that's something that happened a few years ago. But uh, yeah, so I, I like to fish. Tie flies in the winter. Love to fly fish. Now, I've watched guys do it. I've tried to do it, but my thumbs are you know, oh, five yeah. in one oh, hand. Yeah. How do you, do you work from a real fly, or do you just conjure up so many feathers and Whatever. so many you know, red dots? There's my be my theory is you go into, into uh, uh, a fishing supply place where they sell all kinds of fishing mm -hmm. stuff, right? Oh, it looks so beautiful. The fish don't go there. All that stuff is beautiful to catch the fishermen, not fish. Huh? Fish never see that stuff until the fisherman says, ah, this is it, and throws it out there. They spit it out. Yeah. So what you're saying then, I guess to answer my question, you conjure up what you feel, that if you were a good bass or pickerel or whatever, yeah. this is what I would like to have as a, yeah. a steady yeah. diet. Yeah. yeah. And how do you come by that knowledge? Hunt and go seek? How do yeah, you... yeah. You'd try it. You know, this looks good. Okay. Yeah. Does it work? Uh, sometimes, It's yeah. your chance to blow smoke now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. But, yeah, sometimes it works. Okay. Yeah. 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 Do you have a platinum? No, no. I, I also feel that I have this aura about me. Let me explain that. There's a, there's a small brook in uh, Hollis. I decided to try one day, and there's a road going over, the, over the, a bridge going over the brook. Well, I pulled up in the car, and I go up on top of the bridge and look down in this pool. The pool was only about a foot deep. I can see fish in there. Don't know what they are, but there's fish. I said, ah, that's for me. Well, I went down here with my fly rod and one fly that I tied. And lo and behold, I caught a trout. Now, it's a, it's a, a managed Fishing place means barbless hooks and catch and release. So I cut the one fit, one trout. I said, ah, that's good, and let it go. And I, that was the only fish I caught all the time I was there. So I went back there a few weeks later. I said, oh, go try it again. Looking down from on the bridge, and I see the fish down there. I said, oh, they're still here. So I go get my fishing rod out, my fly rod out. Oh, well, I got a tangle in the line, so I worked to get the Tangle out, go down there, cast and cast and cast and cast, never caught a fish. Packed up the stuff, throw it in the car, go back, look down from the bridge, no fish. They've all gone. Then I, I approach them, they all go. That's my aura. Right? Yeah, there's a, there's a message in there someplace. <laughs> Stay the heck away, you want to lose it. Don't go fishing with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I still love to go. You know, if you go fishing and expect to catch a fish every time, you must well give up the hobby because it ain't going to happen. You're not going to get a fish every time. I go for the sake of getting out there, the fresh air, and okay. just thinking that today is the day. And I just keep that thought and go at it. One yeah. question for you. We're going to get, draw them to a close pretty soon. With all you've seen and done and so forth, do you feel that the experience you got in the Navy was positive or negative as far as how you've worked your life after? I think it was positive because I got to go to that school. It gave me a trade, and I put the trade to good use. Good. Yeah. Now, 
I go to school you know, after I get out. Transistors haven't been invented yet. A couple of years into the, into the school, and all of a sudden, Bell Labs comes out with a transistor. Wow, look at that thing. And the, <clears throat> goes to class, and the professor says, well, today we're going to talk about transistors, but don't worry about it. He says, we're not, I'm not going to test you on it. He says, they're not going to last anyway. Oh, <laughs> that's the first bright thing he said all <laughs> yeah, day. <laughs> yeah, transistors aren't going to last. These are just a fad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I know. I had I struggled in school. Uh, chemistry. I never had chemistry in high school, and they assumed that I had. You know. Most everybody going there had chemistry. I never took chemistry because I was trying to get out of school, trying to graduate high school. So I never bothered with chemistry. So I had to, I had to take two semesters of first. Freshman chemistry. Took the first semester and flunked. I failed. I said, oh, all right. Well, Merrimack College is teaching the same course, freshman chemistry. So I took the freshman chemistry and the second semester chemistry at, at, uh, in Lowell and the, the first semester in Merrimack College. And they accepted it. So that's how I graduated first year chemistry. Okay, you got yeah, it. I got it. You worked around it. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. yeah. But there were some courses that were way beyond me, and, and I wasn't the only one that okay. had problems with them. Yeah. Don't beat yourself down. No, no, people no. do it easy. No. At the risk of sounding like a recruiter, I'll ask you the same question that was asked of me. With the way the politics are and so forth in this current time we live, would you suggest or recommend to some of the young kids who may be on the cusp, do I? do this or do that, to look into joining any of the service branches and going to some of their schools? Well, I look back and I say, Eisenhower had the right idea, compulsive military training for 18 months or two years or something like that. And it makes, the, makes a man or, uh, you know, makes you feel like you are something. Oh? Yeah. Now you're, you are controlled, you're not, you know, beating your head and against the wall and run into all that other stuff. You're out there. You're under somebody's thumb. And they're controlling you. And if you don't go along with it, you are in deep doo-doo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I guess that's a no. <laughs> all right. Three or four words. I thank you, sir, yeah. for sharing your talk with me. Thank you. And thank you for helping me get these yeah. other guys, OK? Yeah. Yeah. That's a wrap, folks. But before I leave, I'd like to remind you again of that telephone number, 211, for any guy and gal who is in any need of help, or your friends may think of it. Call it. It's there for you if you've had at least six months good service and an honorable discharge. For those of you who would like to try this program, do an interview, the address will be in the back of the program here, and we'll do anything we can to make sure that your story is well presented and you're satisfied with it. And it'll help answer the question, hey, Grandpa or son, junior, whatever, what did you do in the war? Take it right from there. And for those of you who are on the cusp, if you will, going on the hill, this will perhaps, if you do an interview, it'll be, as I was told several times, and I'm proud of it, it'll be perhaps one of the best priceless legacies that you can leave your family. That's simple. And if you don't tell your story, though, Nobody else will, and we've lost it. Bob Stevens saying, thank you for listening. Come and join us, if you will. Stay healthy. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.